Red Hot Comic Book Movie News. Defenders of the Earth. Defenders. The Weekly Planet. The Weekly Planet. Welcome back, everybody, to another, to another episode of The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday. And with me, as always, my co-host, Nick Mason. I- Can we get through one intro without you messing it up, James? <laughs> I had a lot of junk food this weekend. My brain, like, we just recorded a caravan of garbage before this, and I'm like... Excuses, my brain, excuses, <laughs> excuses, James. It's, not, it's always excuses with you. It's not, it's not always excuses. Sometimes it's excuses sometimes with you. That, sometimes they and make honestly, excuses. now that I think about it, most of the time you pull off the intro flawlessly. <laughs> I wouldn't say that's true either. Excuses, excuses. <laughs> Anyways, Nick Mason. Oh, it's great to be here. I'm having a good time. <laughs> yeah, we're all having a good time here. I think. Mason, big week. Is it? Maybe. Yeah, nice. Uh, you know, uh, we didn't see Blue Beetle because it's not out here till like mid-September. We haven't seen Blue Beetle. We haven't seen Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That one because we don't want to. That's true. No, that's not. That's out in a couple of weeks as well. What are yeah. they doing to us? I don't know. I don't what, like it. What are they? They are they deliberately trying to tank our business model where we a movie comes out at the same time all around the world and we watch it and we go, that's pretty good. Mm. Pretty all right. I don't yeah, mind that. Exactly. Yeah. This is free. We're doing this. We're doing free fr- promo when we tell your people your movie is okay. That's right. You should be thanking us. Yeah, that's right. Jesus, we move the needle. You know. Yep, we do. Absolutely. Right. Well, don't worry though. I got a topic this week. Oh, we got one God. sent in. We're going to talk about movie urban legends. Oh my god! And not goodness. the movies urban legends. Legend. Not the, the movie what? urban legend. No. Is there an urban legend franchise? Is yes. there more than one? I've okay. only seen Urban Legend two. Ah. Yeah. And I'm watching this, and I'm like, how many of these are actually urban legends? <laughs> all the dia- all the dialogue is like, oh my god, we're gonna this is this is just like that urban legend that happened last time. <laughs> and just a repeat of the previous movie, or like Maybe, something, I don't one, know. one they made up. God, we gotta we gotta we gotta run because of the urban legend from before. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, I think also you know when you do Final Destination, it could be anything. That's true. You know, it can be you can be Final Destination in any which way. Mm. But urban legend, you got to be like. Oh, did we do the one with the guy in the hook hand and like this, he scratched on the car and like you know? Yeah, I mean, Final Destination. Sure, you can do any Final Destination, but it's almost exclusively you're driving behind with a truck <laughs> and there's a bunch of logs on the truck and then the logs come loose and they go through your windshield and you. I you, think that uh, happened one time, Mason. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, good movie, maybe. Or well, that clip is logs. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, we've got some news leading up to that, including Disney is being sued. Oh and they're goodness. also suing somebody. I love that. Uh, <laughs> Are they all bad people involved? Yeah. Great. Then I'm, I'm on board with that. <laughs> We've got news of what's going on in the Hasbro Entertainment Universe sphere. Now, which one is, is that? Is that That's Mattel. not Mattel. It is no, Mattel. No, wait. Hasbro no. and Mattel are different, I think. No, you're right. I thought I got them confused. Mattel is Barbie. Yeah, this is different. And Hasbro is G.I. Joe slash and others. Transformers. Yeah, wow. I didn't even realize that. But yeah, you're absolutely Do right. Do you think we're gonna in the future we're going to have competing toy verses I hope coming so. at each other? Oh my God. Like the ending of The Flash when all the orbs were colliding. Yeah. We recently rewatched The Flash. We, that's, we, why we, that's, that's why that's we're top gonna, of mind. It's not out you. yet, but it will be. And, mm. and when it's always top of mind. That's true. I mean, how do you top that version of the multiverse? Mm. I mean, every every time I'm like, hey, James, I'm going to just go pop down the shops for a second. You're like, make sure to look up at the camera just in case <laughs> you're arrested for murder so you, they can see you're at the supermarket. Yeah, absolutely. I thought you were going to say, make sure you look up so our universe is in an orb and it crashes into another orb. And you see Nick Cage, you see dead Christopher Reeve. Terrible. Spoiler alert. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the MonsterVerse is expanding. Oh, that's right, it is. Get into that. Mm. And casting with the MonsterVerse. That's we, right, we got yeah. some. Uh, we got some we got specifics. Some, we got some big picks. Mm. Uh, we also got some rumours regarding Thor 5 and in addition to Avengers Secret Wars slash Marvel Reboot. Slash and then, of course, Marvel, excuse me. Marvel yeah, we'll Reboot. talk about it. Then we've got Barbie... Um, it's big still. Continues to be big. It's big. I ho- certainly hope Warner Brothers don't sabotage their <laughs> cinema release of it at any point yeah. at the six week mark. Mm. They wouldn't do that, would they? I think that would be a terrible idea. It seems mm. to be still doing well. People are seeing it. And then we'll talk a little bit about how Blue Beetle's doing before doing that thing that I set up top. There's time codes below because Collins, who edits this, he's very kind. And he says, can I put in time codes? Right. And I say, absolutely not. And he says, it's for the people. And I said, they're grubs. They don't deserve it. I said. That's what you say. That's what I say. But huh. he. He overrides me. That's true. You know, because ultimately I'm not going to go into the description. Yeah, yeah. You know? And he's locked you out of the upload. <laughs> yes, system. yeah. For good reason. He was right to do it. On account of all your rants and such. That's right. So T- this is via THR. TSG Entertainment, they, they apparently over the years. Is TSG Entertainment the one that it's got the Archer 
in the in the logo. Yeah, maybe. He sh- and he shoots. Let me check. Okay. Let me Google that. Okay, great. Because sometimes you see a bunch of logos and you're like, is that even a real one or is that one a tax dodge? It's probably a tax dodge. Yeah. Yeah, man, it is, and it goes through all the axes. Yeah, 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 yeah. God, yeah, yeah. you are on it. Oh, I'm you're on fire, <laughs> man. Because I'm a professional. Nobody in the world could have done that. What you just did, I agree. You are basically the guy shooting the arrow through all of those axes. That's correct. You're William Tell of mm. rec- of attaching a logo to a to a brand or whatever's happening here. That's right. Mm. I set my son up next to a tree, <laughs> and I put a brand logo on his head, <laughs> and I shoot that arrow. <laughs> Uh, I get a, then I get a fresh son. That's right. <laughs> they produced Logan. Yes, they did. Yeah. So apparently over the years they've invested. They produced m- Jungle Cruise. Yeah, the good movie. They invested more than $3 billion in multiple 20th century studio movies. And that's including the Avatar film franchise. Okay. But as a result of this, it seems, because if you recall correctly. James, I've already done one bit of flawless recalling. <laughs> okay. I don't know if I'm going to be able to recall okay, whatever this is. Okay, let me give is. you a piece of information. Okay, great. And that's that Disney bought 20th Century Fox couple of years For money. Back. For money. Perfect used, recall. Yeah, <laughs> Perfect recall. <laughs> wow. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so basically they've been distributing these movies, right? Mm. But apparently Disney have been doing some Hollywood accounting. Oh, no. And the film financier at TSG Entertainment is suing Disney and 20th Century Studios for a breach of contract. It alleges that Disney has withheld profits from certain films and has also cut deals with TSG made in an effort to boost its streaming platforms. TSG is basically saying the movies like its best picture winner, The Shape of Water, uh, they're down, for example, forty million dollars on that one in particular. That's a lot of money. But it's estimated that the actual number for a number of these movies is like in the hundreds of millions. Ooh. The company claims to have invested around three point three billion dollars into one studio. This is via C and B C, which I know <laughs> you love. And you know the logo. Yes. You know it, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, since it's the a deal globe, began. Probably, I reckon. Yes. But the money or that some lines? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And it cuts to a boring person That's absolutely telling you right. a boring thing about the news. <laughs> That's right. Um, like acquisitions and a company suing another company. Oh, Yawn, boring. Look at this graph. Oh. But the money they've received apparently following all of this has decreased dramatically over the years. Interesting. And it's not like Disney hard up for a buck, especially mm. the Avatar franchise, which has the biggest movie of all time. Sure does. So this is probably true, mm. I would say. That's exactly right. So, you know. Um, oh, and we didn't, we, I don't think we spoke about this. We, we, we mentioned this briefly a few weeks ago, I think, that Disney is pulling out of physical media distribution yes. in Australia. We have mentioned it, yeah. We did mention it. And so they're not no longer be selling DVDs and Blu-rays. At a certain point, they're gonna they're gonna yeah. drop them all. And I think perhaps you know we we didn't mention that. Of course, they distribute everything from Fox and etc. Oh yeah. So yeah. if you want a copy of Die Hard or Aliens or something, nah. you might be out of luck in a. Uh, well, I've already got a copy of Die Hard Four. What yes. else would I need? <laughs> so, but do you have a copy? Die, of Die Hard Four and Aliens Four. Yes. Do you have a copy of Die Hard Five? No. Die Hard teams up with Die Hard Son. <laughs> Die Hard Junior. <laughs> do, 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 you have, do you have that one? No, I don't. Should I get it? Who's Die Hard Junior again? Jai Courtney. I knew that. Did per- you? Perfect recall. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, you've got a great track record. I know, right? Yeah. And another bit of news, you might have seen that Ron DeSantis went up against Disney recently because they were right. too woke. And mm. Disney obviously is a big part of the uh, Floridian economy. That's right. And the thing about if you're a politician, you're supposed to say all these things. You're supposed to be like, I'm going to tackle woke corporations. I'm going to do this. I'm going to... I'm going to clean up politics and whatever. Yeah. But you don't actually do it. But then do you it. don't do it. Because it's hard. You fucking idiot. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. And also the other thing is people in Florida and the world, despite what you may have heard, they love Disney. Yeah. They love going to Disneyland. Some people probably move to Florida so they yeah. can go to Disneyland every day. So basically <laughs> he's, he's decided that actually he's moved on. Mm. He's, he's like, Disney need to move on from this situation. So if Disney <laughs> could stop suing me for millions of dollars. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Well, but- they're not. Yeah. They're going to keep doing it. Mm. This guy, I mean, I know, look, he came into our sphere. I didn't want to talk about politics. Right. But he put his foot into our world, quite That's frankly. Right. And just like, God, this guy, he sucks. Like, what an <laughs> absolute fucking charisma black hole. Yeah. What just a... like, come on. no, You're nobody's guy. What are you doing? It's... What an absolute fucking he's loser. A, he's another one of those guys who spent his entire life working his way to potentially becoming the president, but then he had the misfortune of existing in a media landscape where Donald Trump could just call him Meatball Ron, <laughs> and then it just annihilates his chances forever. Yeah, and then he's like, because he's gotten skinnier, because I think he took that to heart, and there was probably focus groups, and he took a bunch of Ozempic, but now people are like, you look weird now. We don't like you, Skinny. We mm. like our politicians like regular people. He's a fucking freak, mate. <laughs> What's wrong with this guy? Agreed. Go away. I was speaking of... um. 
Speaking of royalties and so forth, oh, and, yeah. and so on and so forth, did you see that the the woman who plays the nun uh, oh, is suing Warner as well as yeah, yeah. So you can, you, is, is suing Warner Brothers because they they sell a bunch of merchandise with the nun on it, and yeah. apparently she was she was owed a bunch of. She said, "Can I have some money?" And they said, "That's none your business." Oh, <laughs> and they all laughed, but they meant it. Yeah, I would have laughed too in the room. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bonnie yeah. Aaron's. Yeah, anyway, best of luck to her. I mean, that makes total sense. You're using her literal face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Mm. I haven't seen any of those movies. What's that a spin-off of? Conjuring? I don't know. Yeah, I think it's The Conjuring. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Or the other one. Or the other one. Oh, The Purge. Pur- the Purge, yeah. Yeah, The Purge. <laughs> the Purge. There we go. Anyway, mm-hmm. let's, talk, uh, let's talk big toy brands. I okay. genuinely thought this was like a Mattel thing. Wow, well, okay. I'm just I'm spinning out. I, I wish re- I had your perfect recall. Well. Go on. Um, something, <laughs> um, something, uh, some, no, I'm, 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 I'm creating the perfect joke. Oh, okay. Uh, that's different from recalling things, right? It is, yeah. And when you're busy having perfect recall, yeah, it's sometimes difficult to churn out the perfect you're joke. You're going through all, all, yeah, because you're going through all the possibilities. I've of got being... a bunch of mind palaces operating all simultaneously. Oh my God, adjoining mind palaces? Yes, that's right. Have you got yeah. like a little golf buggy where you drive in between them? Yes, a perfectly recalled golf buggy. Because <laughs> one time as a very it small child. It was recalled? Child, no. Oh, it like works properly. Yes. It wasn't recalled. For I like... recalled it from my memory when I was a small child. I was on a golf buggy once for two seconds, and I remember it perfectly. <laughs> and that's the golf buggy in my mind that goes between mind palaces, so I can recall things and create perfect jokes. Anyway, something total recalls. Arnold Schwarzenegger's in it. Yep. Perfect recall. If that maybe that's what the movie could have been called. Sure. Yeah. And, and he has good memory or something. He's got you know? memory. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, oh, none of these memories are real. I remember. That's right. No, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And more so my accent wasn't real. That's why I just talk like this now. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's by Variety. Okay. Hasbro is launching a new division called Hasbro Entertainment. Oh, yeah. Which will unify the company's film, television, animation, and digital media businesses. I love that. I know. Oh, uh, they look. I smell synergy. Yeah. So they got a, they got three guys together who worked in various fields whose names are important probably. But they, apparently they look forward to being able to push the envelope with innovative storytelling that will let fans engage with their favorite brands like never before while also building exciting new worlds and the next wave of Hasbro franchises for a growing audience. I love all that. Now, Hasbro right. is currently developing uh, and producing over two dozen projects based on major IP. And you might be like, what are you specifically referring to? And I can hungry, tell hungry Hippos? Maybe. Is a Hasbro band? Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, yep. Well, they're um, not going to do much of that because no, because the, the movie didn't do it well. It was good, but it didn't do well. Uh, Transformers, again, uh, Rise of the Beasts recently finished its theatrical run and was the lowest performing Transformers movie in history of the live action ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But of course, they're doing the animated reboot origin movie next year, which I think could yeah. be better. Uh, G.I. Joe, again, like a dead franchise. Nerf. James, that franchise hasn't even had a chance to be dead yet. It's been three movies and a tease at the end of the last yeah, Transformers that's movie. that's right. G.I. Joe Empty Warehouse. <laughs> G.I. Joe Empty Warehouse prequel. <laughs> what could be in here? Maybe by the end of the movie we'll earn ourselves a tank. Yeah, tell us. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Nerf? Somebody, I don't, have the, I don't have the tweet here, but somebody on Twitter had an incredible idea for a Nerf movie. Mm. This, this is the one thing I wanted to talk about. Okay. So all of this is garbage. All the Mattel stuff is garbage. All the Hasbro Do you want me to give you the garbage. other names before you come yes, back go, to Nerf? Yes, go for it. Play-Doh? Okay. Uh, the Play-Doh is magic and you put – you make Plasticine some, You make something with Play-Doh and it comes to life and it's magical. Yeah, and it, yep, it right. tries to, I don't know, get in your toilet. It tries to get in your toilet, yes. <laughs> magic the Gathering? Okay. People love that. Yeah. And that's... that ring thing happened recently. You know, that someone found the one ring card. It was worth oh, like yeah, $2 million yeah. and then Post Malone bought it or whatever. Mm. Peppa Pig? I mean, that's huge. But okay. That, yeah, but uh, and isn't my- there already Peppa Pig like car- Peppa Pig's a cartoon, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So okay. Peppa Pig's everywhere. Peppa Pig's right. like the biggest brand in the world. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hang on. What's the thing? Oh, Magic the Gathering. Yeah, so that's got a big. Oh, and My Little Pony. All yeah, right, sorry, okay. gone. Magic the Gathering has like a huge, yeah. like it's got a bunch of lore behind it. Obviously, it's got a, many, many users, yes. players, and so forth. But yeah, that's got a big. As, as far as I know, it's got a huge like. It's all about the 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 people that crafted the and they summoned the the monsters and they created all the the artifacts and blah 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 and there's a is it yeah I think so yeah yeah and there's a bunch you of mean guys. you know so I know so yeah yeah yeah, yeah okay yeah absolutely I mean it's mm. huge it's very very popular yeah yeah, yeah but yeah. is that one of those things where how do you translate that to like a a media like a film or television medium poorly yeah there you go very badly uh, but you were going to say on that Nerf oh, okay thing, actually though. I have it here okay. Mm. 
You mean you remember it? No, I found that. Yes, I found the tweet in my mind palace, James, where I will recall it perfectly. Yeah, not recall it because it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm recalling it from my memory because it's good. Absolutely. It's from at Van the Brand on Twitter. Here we go. Um, who says, I pitched a Nerf idea I loved a, f- a few years back that I- they didn't go for. Get a Rock, a Hemsworth, any big action star, hire a great action director and do a normal action movie but every weapon's a Nerf weapon. Yeah. Every bullet is foam, never directly address it in the film and play it all straight. So, like, make an extraction mm-hmm. with Chris, Chris Hemsworth. Everybody's got a Nerf gun. And there's so many cool Nerf guns. Yeah, right. So many different things and grenades and yeah, bow yeah. and arrows. And but whatever. just have people just – because, I mean, you know, as we know from John Wick, yeah. they don't use real guns, but everybody sells the firing and everybody sells yeah. getting shot. So you just do that and just have people – Act like they're being chewed up by machine gun fire a, and fall off a train. A re- or I mean, also the thing about that is, that's brilliant. That's how kids play. Yeah, that's how you play Nerf. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. You don't get shot and go. It's not real. It's not real. <laughs> that's right. You know. Yeah, I yeah. mean, some awful, some yeah, yeah. awful kid would. Yeah. But, yeah. What you could also do is you could have it. The, you know, they got like the mini gun ones and yeah, everything. Yeah. You could you could get like let's say it's a Chris Hemsworth extraction style movie. You get him right till the end, and he's facing off against the big bad guy at the top of the skyscraper or whatever, and he's like. Firing the nerf, and the bad guy's just like, "Yeah, well, I've got a nerf-proof shield. I'm actually, we're at a nerf-proof shield right now." So, or you just get right to the end, and the guy's like, "You've got a nerf gun. Yeah. What's happening? I have it's, a real gun." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that's really good. I like that. I think a that's lot. great. I mean, Everybody it also garbage. it would depend on like obviously the quality of it as an action movie, because yeah. as an idea, like that's good, but it would have to be also in a compelling. That's narrative. true. Yeah. You know, but that's the easy part. Yeah. But again, it'd have to be one – again, it'd have to be extraction. Yeah. It'd have to be 100% played straight. Yep. And not with a nod and a wink to the camera. No. But, and also you could do – it could be a PG-13 movie that looks like a gritty – Yeah. Act. There'd be no blood as well, I guess. No. So, but, yeah, it could, it could look like the grittiest, most vile – you could do it like Reservoir Dogs. Yeah. Like, but no – Yeah. And you could – you know what you could do? You could add in more swearing. Because there's no violence. No violence, baby. <laughs> Anyways, uh, to wrap up this quote, audiences can count on Hasbro to keep creating compelling and fun entertainment that bring to life our wide array of iconic brands, including Peppa Pig, My Little Pony, and Transformers, reaching audiences through varied platforms in ways that resonate in today's fast-paced world. Yeah. Love that. Right. Who crafted this? Mobile games, maybe? Yeah, probably. Some sort of Marvel Snap-style game? Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, though, like Ninja Turtles isn't doing, like, great, Mm. and Transformers didn't do great, but the... But the the toy, the merch for that shit is like insane. Well, that's true, yeah. So that's really what matters. At, yeah, at I mean, you point. know, these are all. I mean, you know, they're obviously people know this. They're ads for for toys. I mean, Ninja so they t- can put out Ninja Turtles and it takes a hit. Yeah, and, and they've sold like a, literally a billion dollars worth of toys this year already. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Ninja Turtles. You know, that's that's the, it's built on the back of merch. Yeah, you know, so I mean. You know, because I go to the toy aisle with my son, I drag him there, and he's like, "Dad, I just want to look at a calculator." I'm like, I just want to no. get a, I want to get a new abacus, <laughs> Dad. Dad, you've got an old abacus. I want educational wooden toys, Father. <laughs> That's what I'd like. <laughs> well, you're not getting any of them. Yeah, I'm, you're gonna get yourself glued to that bloody Nintendo Switch. <laughs> you're gonna play it all day. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm gonna show you how to use microtransactions. <laughs> you're gonna make me go bloody bankrupt. That's what we're here for. I feel like branding of Ninja Turtles when I was a kid in the mm-hmm. 90s like broke my brain because I saw like the shelf of new Ninja Turtles mm-hmm. and they're all there and I'm like, oh, the movie's not out here. I should get all these before they disappear. Because <laughs> yes. when I was a kid, you couldn't get a Ninja Turtle that's for right. like a year. Mm. But they'll be there forever, obviously, or I could order them, order them online. But that's mm. what this shit does to your brain. That's it turns true, out. Yeah. 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 Anyway, so I bought them all. No, <laughs> I, I didn't really. Uh, but also, what I again, I haven't seen the new Ninja Turtles movie, but what I think is really effective about seeing all the products and seeing it that is – the movie looks like how the toy line kind of was, just like weird and gross. Yeah, and absolutely, like, yeah. And just like grungy, and I feel like they've captured that aesthetic in this movie I haven't seen. Anyway, right. let's move it along. All right, then. This is via Apple An brand. Apple. Ah. Yeah. Okay. you got too many things in your Mind Palace, so I'd imagine you're going to different yeah, apples. I'm going to have to move some Mind Palace stuff to one of my additional Mind Palace storage rooms, <laughs> which, again, is a perfectly yeah. recalled – What's that uh, cost you? Like two hundred and twenty dollars a month. Oh my god! But it's a decent amount of space. Well, like, yeah. and it's also imaginary money. But I do have to perfectly <laughs> imagine the money coming from my and all the serial numbers. Yeah, no, because it's digital. But I have to imagine. Oh. I, have to, I have to imagine a separate bank account that is similar <laughs> to my real bank account. But I have to keep. Yeah, you know, I have to keep track of that. The amount of money in that, which is different from my. Because you're paying bank a person in your mind to yeah, storage yeah. kings in your mind. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Great. Yeah. Anyways, it's by Apple. The. With the big brand. Mm. 
Uh, the MonsterVerse is expanding. Now, what we're getting here, we got a few images this week of Monarch Legacy of Monsters. Okay, yeah. This is a new series which will span generations. I'm happy to read the synopsis in a minute. Okay. Uh, which is set within the current Godzilla reverse. Mm, that's right. Which started in 2014 and whatever. Apparently it tracks two siblings following in their father's footsteps to uncover the family's connection to the secretive organisation known as Monarch. Clues lead them to the world of monsters and ultimately down the rabbit hole to Army Officer Lee Shaw, played by Kurt Russell and Wyatt Russell. That's, there it is. That's there the it stuff. Is. It's his son, if those people don't know. Uh, taking place in the 1950s and half a century later where Monarch is threatening, uh, is threatened by Shaw, what Shaw, Shaw, Shaw knows. The uh, dramatic... <laughs> Shaw sa- knows. Shaw knows. What does he know? The dramatic saga spanning three generations revealed buried secrets and uh, the ways that epic earth-shattering Three events. generations? Yeah. So White Russell's going to have to have a kid real quick. I assume so. But if it's if it's set in the 50s, uh-huh. then he would then the next era would have to be in like the 2000s, right? Mm. Because that would be modern Kurt Russell because that would be 50 years later. Yes, so it couldn't right. be the 50s and then 2023. So I'm presuming it's modern day. Maybe. Heading up and whatever. Mm. So anyway, we saw a couple images. One was of White Russell and Kurt Russell, and then we saw a Godzilla. That's right. Looks expensive. Mm, that's right. Apple makes some good stuff, man. I'll tell you what, better than – I'd say it's probably the best streaming platform. What about Stan? The quality. Stan's fine, but I feel like it also borrows <laughs> a lot of things from overseas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's uh-huh. good. As an yeah. Australian streaming service, it's yeah. pretty good. I was thinking about that the other day. If I were to have to get rid of everything – Look, I don't have Apple TV. Maybe I should get it. Yeah. But Stan is quite good in that they actually make Australian programming. That's like true. Original also. stuff. And they put on Australian comedy. And That's right. Yeah. And they uh, have stuff from like before The Matrix. Yeah. Like from that was made before The Matrix. Oh, my God. Which is nice, you know. There was movies before The Matrix? There was one movie before The Matrix. Was it good? No. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it was the movie that The Matrix stole all their ideas from. <laughs> well, I want to watch the best. best Gone with the Wind. That. Yeah, okay. Anyways, How do you got, think Neo gets around? The wind. Yeah, he gets gone he with the wind. goes with the wind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trinity, I'm going with the wind. All right. Oh, my God, no one's ever gone with the wind before. <laughs> He's doing it. <laughs> he, he does, doesn't he? Yeah. Uh, it's going to be ten episodes. Mm. So that's cool. If I knew more about the movie Gone with the Wind, I'd have some better <laughs> references there. Sure. But I've never seen it. I've seen know? bits and pieces of it. What's it about? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Perfect Recall. Okay. The War. The Civil War. Is it the Franklin, my dear? I've got, I don't give a damn. Is that yeah, the movie? probably. Okay, great. Yeah, that guy. Didn't Frankly, get... my dear. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> then he flies off. Yeah. yeah, like a packet of crisps. That's exactly right. Great. Here's some Marvel news. This is via my time to shine hello on Twitter. I Apparently, Thor Five is in development at Marvel Studios. I see. Unfortunately. This is what this is their words. Oh, there is a good chance Taika Waititi will return to direct, but it is not a done deal. Uh, they go on to say, I'd like to Crocodile done deal. Yeah, thank you. I'd That's like not to... relating to anything. I, just... I didn't think, I mean, it's good. But I'll, if I don't say it now, I'll forget it later. Yeah. You know, so. <laughs> You'd hate that, wouldn't you? I'm not really. I mean, I'll you won't it, forget I'll put it in my subsequent yeah. one of my, one of, I'll put it in one of my, you know, yeah. tertiary mind You'll palaces. come back to it. You'll open a box and you'll be like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> what was this for? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you'll remember what it's for. Yeah, yeah. But ultimately yeah. that time has passed. That's right. This is difficult to track, keep track of. Uh, he said, I'd like Not to see. for me. <laughs> no, I know. Obviously. I'd like to see someone like Sam Hargrave doing it. Uh, Who's that? Uh, he did the extraction movies. Oh. He'll make like a badass Thor movie. Yeah, I think it definitely is time to change Thor. And they've even mm. talked about like. Well, here's doing the thing so. also. I wouldn't even mind if it's like a what we do in the shadows. You know, it's a funny Thor movie. Mm. But don't give us this weird tonal whiplash again for the next one. Yeah, fair enough. But I think you're probably right in that. Barbarian Thor or another version? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. But I think that perhaps the 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 feedback on the last one was so yeah. severe that I perhaps people, the, the filmmakers might be like, no, this has to be a serious one. Yeah. But I wouldn't I wouldn't hate a funny one as long as they don't no. go. As long as they don't go, this character has cancer, but also... Brrr, you know? <laughs> yeah, but also burp. Uh, it's what Taika Waititi said about Unless it. Unless that's a burp of sadness, like yeah, a sincere burp then, of yeah. sadness. Taika Waititi said about the next one, I don't think we can have a villain that's weaker than Hella. I feel like we need to step up from there and add a villain that's somehow more formidable. I think we even had that with like the last villain was yeah, a sword that could kill anything or that's whatever. That's true. And that's pretty tough mm. and cool. Yeah. yeah. What about a sword that can kill nothing? <laughs> okay. It's the only thing more powerful. It's a breadstick or something? No, it's a sword. It's a sword, but it yeah. doesn't like... Do anything. Can't lift it. I you can so. lift it, but but why know. would you? You know, <laughs> why would it saps your will to to do anything? Oh god! It's like that kid. Cutting... It's a metaphor for going to work. Yeah, it's like that kid cutting film clip where he keeps trying to get up and he's back on a couch. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
you got to kill somebody, but then you realise you're lying down. You got to you take the sword out of the scabbard and you bring it up, and then it just goes into another scabbard. <laughs> I can wait a minute. <laughs> Uh, this next bit of news, though, is... And then you're just behind a desk. <laughs> it's your job. <laughs> uh, by Can We Get Some Toast on Twitter, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. who says, apparently, the writing is on the wall. Avengers Secret Wars, which is... Is that the next one or the one after? The next Avengers movie? Or Ka- I think it's Kang Dynasty. Oh, yeah, Avengers that's Secret right. Wars. Yeah, great recall. It's very likely setting up a soft reboot to this. When I say I think. Yeah, I I'm know just you doing know. that for your benefit. You're being polite. Yeah, I'm being polite. Uh, it's very likely setting up a soft reboot to the entire MCU, kind of like what The Flash did uh, for the DCU. Oh, don't no, say don't that. No, don't say that. That's, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't say that. If you want, if Boy, if you want some box office poison, say, <laughs> say anything and then follow up like, with like the Flash did, like the Flash did, it'll be a send off for not only the entirety of the Fox verse, but the MCU that we've grown to love. In the aftermath, will be an all new, all different MCU. That sounds like, yeah, I think that's they're going to have to do it at some point, right? Because all the actors will age out, and they're going to have to basically create the Ultimate Universe or some variation on the live action yeah, stuff. Uh-huh. And also, then when you do that, you know, then you can have the X Men integrated with. All the characters that they've already churned through. That's true. As to, yes. to be like, what would yeah. happen if Patrick Stewart met Iron Man or whatever? Mm. I'd imagine it would be pretty cool. Oh, it'd be cooler. What right. do you think of that, though? A Marvel reboot. I'm all for it. Yeah. I think I've, we've, I'm, I'm sure we've talked about it in a passing, but speaking of Thor, yeah. again, you know, Chris Hemsworth has said he doesn't want to be Thor forever, obviously. Mm. And I've said that, you know, I've said regarding the, you know, some huge epic storylines that they've taken from the comics and just squished down into two hours. Yeah. Because they have the stars available and Kevin mm. Feige wants to do it and et cetera. And they're like, well, we, we don't have unlimited time, so let's just do it. And I think that yeah. ends up, they end up doing kind of a half assed job. So if reboot it, new cast member, and then you've got 10 years to do. More Thor movies or whatever. You, know? you can do finally do a good Batman versus Superman movie. Absolutely. Yeah, that'd be cool. Do you see Wolverine's gonna fight Predator? Because Marvel have Predator oh. now, whatever. So there's gonna be uh, the story is going to I can't remember who the writers are, but it seemed like a good team. The it's gonna span like decades. Oh, that's like fun. These two being like, oh you, you Family Guy chicken fight. Family Guy chicken over fight. and over again. Yeah. I feel like Wolverine would kill the Predator pretty easily, pretty handily, right? Yeah. It depends on what where his level of healing is at. And also, can you smell the predator? You would assume so. Yeah. He like looks even like if he's stems. invisible, you'd be like, Like Dang. I can smell the predator. <laughs> yeah, I mean. This was like a broken glow stick, this fuck. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe they do a thing and they shoot him with a with a, with a a mechanism and it gets in him and his healing factor stops working. And, yeah, yeah. You know, blah, blah, also, blah. if you hit him with that blaster cannon like through the head, that'd probably kill him. Probably kill maybe. him, yeah. Yeah. So that's cool. It's cool. Uh, Barbie has surpassed The Dark Knight as Warner Brothers' highest grossing domestic release. And best movie. That's right. Everyone's saying Everyone's it. Everyone's saying it. We're saying it. Barbie's better than The Dark Knight. It's true. Performances are better. Now, The Dark Knight grossed something around, no, not something it did, $536 million in its domestic run in the US. Barbie's mm. beyond that. Obviously, taking into account inflation and whatever, mm. you know, Barbie sure, sure. would be, but it's, it's very good. It's doing very well, mm-hmm. uh, despite what you may have heard. No, I've heard that. Yeah, well, that's yeah. They're, 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 I guess I may true. have heard the opposite, <laughs> yeah. but I haven't. To be clear, I haven't heard that. No. It's... Uh, and, and also it's coming to streaming quite soon. Yeah, I think what was the date just, on that? Maybe September. I think they're just being like, well, why would we want anybody to? You could leave this up for the rest of the year. Right. It is coming on September 5th. Wow, that's soon. And what I said. Damn. Damn. Now, we we'll just quick- why would you oh. want people to go and buy spend twenty dollars on a ticket for each person, or you could just have, you know, get. Do Warner get, Brothers have another movie they want people to see or something? I don't think so. They must have. Maybe there must be like digital distribution contracts. Oh, Blue in Beetle. Place. Yeah, they, yeah. They want people to not watch Barbie anymore, so they can watch Blue Beetle. Yeah, in two weeks or whatever. But there must be this must be a contract thing, right? Because you wouldn't make this decision. Yeah, I, I guess it's a. But they've pushed back things before. That, yeah, exactly. I mean. Surely cinema. Maybe Tom Cruise is doing this. Maybe Tom Cruise is doing this. Surely cinema, surely cinema chains would be like, well, we could bring in the new thing. Yeah. But also we don't want to. Yeah. Because this will make us more money. Surely the, um, the the penalties for not following through on a contract for the next movie must be so high yeah. that they're not willing to just break that contract. Because surely you'd go, well, if we could make another $200 million, yeah. we'll shove this down the line. And, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Mm. Blah, blah, blah. 
Maybe they've they've probably figured out like how much they'll make from streaming and whatever. Yeah, I assume. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great stuff. I uh, just quickly on the topic of Blue Beetle, a movie we have not seen. That's right. Uh, people seem to think it's all right. Great, you know? Yeah. Uh, so I think we talked about it last week. Mm. Best movie since The Dark Knight, etc. They say it's a superhero movie with heart. Yeah, That's finally, right. I say. Mm-hmm. Uh, it did actually take the top spot. Imagine a superhero, but what, what does his family think of it? They like it? I think so, yeah. Yeah, they mm. seem to think it's cool. Yeah. It took the top spot from Barbie. What of a superhero, but he's a little bit left of centre. Mm. He's a... Is he a, he's a young guy, you a know. Young I mean? man? Yeah, young man with some powers, you That's know. That's cool. He doesn't want these powers. He's gonna have to use the powers. I think he'll have to ultimately to fight Red Blue Beetle. That's exactly right. Yeah. I, mean, I have not seen this movie. No. Uh so yeah, twenty seven million. It's like we have though, isn't it? It is like that. Twenty seven mm. million dollars US opening knocked Barbie from the top spot. Uh, but also bad. Mm. Like it did slightly better than they initially thought, but okay. it cost $120 million. Mm. And yeah, it's um it's the first movie in the DCU, though. That's right. And yeah. again, apparently people like it. Yeah. A lot of people like it. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know and I don't want to know because I'm mad about it. I didn't even know it was delayed here. I just assumed it was out mid-September everywhere. We even talked about it last week. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. like, what is happening in the world? Yeah, anyways. Yeah. Mm. This is like the bad old days. It is. When we the movie came out in the US and we'd, we'd read about it in Fangoria magazine. Yep. For example. Exactly. Which was also a year late. <laughs> That's right. I'd read about it in Empire. Yeah. Uh, I'd read about it in uh, the Hits Herald magazine, Sun. Herald Hits Sun. Hits magazine. I'd read about it in The Green Guy. Mm, absolutely. The ages film and television lift out. Really good stuff. Uh, and then and then we have to wait six months. Yep. Yeah. Great. Loved it. The I think the first one where technology caught up to that, was it – was it? I think it was the Kevin Smith movie. Do you remember Zach and Mary make? I do. Porno? Yeah, yeah. That movie came out. It did really badly at the box office in the US. Yeah. And so they delayed the release everywhere else. But then it just went on torrents. Yeah. And so everybody else in the world, including here, just watched. If they, if you were going to watch it, you watched it on a torrent. Yeah, I think. It and so, a, so it did. Does it even not, come to movies here? I don't even remember. I don't Probably even know. Did I? Should, yeah. Maybe for a week. God damn. But yeah, that was the that was the moment where I'm like, look at me now. I'm the captain. That's that exactly right. I'm That's the captain right. of movies. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Great stuff. Now, our topic for this week was actually recommended by a listener in the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates group. It's from Andy Lane. It says, they should do, as us, nice. an entertainment urban legends thing, like Richard Gere and the Gerbil, the ghost <laughs> in Three Men and a Baby. Rod Stewart and the Gerbil. Rod Stewart and the Gerbil. Everybody else in the Gerbil. Yeah. Uh, various Hellblazer writers claiming to have met John Constantine in real life, et cetera. Yes. Uh, I thought this was a great idea. Now, this is something that, you know, maybe you'd think you would save for the spookiest time of the year, and I'm not just talking about tax time. I'm talking Halloween season. But uh, urban legends don't have to be spooky. Well, not all of these are spooky. Mm. Some of them are, certainly, Mason. We've got a couple of articles open and a bit more bits and pieces that we've done research on. I've got one from BuzzFeed. You've got one from Radar Online. Hollywood Doc fucking whatever. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. Yeah. (laughs) And so, yeah, we've got a bunch that we're just going to go through and talk about and some miscellaneous bits and pieces. I know neither of these articles have talked about the John Constantine thing. Do we want to talk about that just briefly up top? Let's talk about it at the end. Okay, fine. So I can have perfect recall. Yeah, you want to get that. Cool. All right. Well, I'm going to start with this one. This is the urban urban legend that in Three Men and a Baby, Mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. movie from the 80s, (laughs) it was filmed in the home. I would have called it Three Men in the 80s. (laughs) Sure. And a baby baby. in the 80s. (laughs) Was uh, there was haunted by a boy who died in the house years before, and his spectre is seen in the background of a scene. And I'm just going to show you the image. There's the boy. You can see him very clearly. I can't in the image. see a boy very clearly at all. No, what do you mean? He's a there's a boy standing there. I mean, it's a person. It looks like a person standing sure. there. Mm-hmm. I remember could be a se- salt and pepper shaker. Yeah, it could be. But I remember seeing this as a kid. It was like Hollywood mysteries. As a kid, it's like this boy died, and there he is. You're watching the famous Australian TV show, Hollywood Mysteries. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Mostly dead boys and so forth. Yeah. So now there's a, this has been, not all of these has debunked, have been debunked, but this one certainly has been. Uh, Roger Ebert.com pointed out that. It's uh, Roger Ebert. That's right. No, he said. He was lurking. <laughs> said no boy died in this home because this wasn't actually a home. It was a soundstage. Wow. Well, a boy could die in a soundstage. So there's that element. A boy could it. die at any stage. <laughs> that's right. Until he becomes a man. Then it's a man dying. <laughs> yes. And the other element of it is that it's not even a person looking. It's actually a cutout of Ted Danson. I thought it looked like a cutout of uh, Ted Danson. And you see it at another point in the movie. Right, yes. So it's just not anything. I'm going, look, 
I'm, it's not even there by accident. Yeah, yeah. Like it's a thing in the movie. Yeah. Sometimes these these articles are we don't we don't know the veracity of the, these articles, but sometimes these articles are written by people who haven't seen any of the movies in question. <laughs> yeah. And the articles like, did you know that in Back to the Future it's called Twin Pines Ball? Oh. But then at the end. They've smashed up the one of the pines in the past, so now it's called Lone Pine Mall. Can mm. you believe that? Not an accident. Yeah, right. We think it's intentional on behalf of the filmmakers. Is that what you think? Is that what you think happened? For people who are wondering what this accent is, it's just the dumbest guy we knew back in high school. <laughs> and it's different guys for us because we went to different schools. That's true. <laughs> but they were probably brothers. They were probably dumb brothers. <laughs> uh, you got one? It was the dumb brothers. <laughs> the dumb brothers. I love these because yeah. on account of how rude they are. Okay, here we go. From the animated movie The Rescuers, oh, yeah, I know this a one. topless woman appears in yep. the animated film The Rescuers. Yeah. Uh, who put the brief image of a topless woman in Disney's 1977 animated, animated feature The Rescuers? No one knows for sure, but the family-friendly studio admitted it was true. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. And you couldn't really see it because if you saw it at the movies, it yeah. would flash by quickly. And then on VHS, like, yeah, it would yeah. be hard to kind of pause on, right? Yeah. Disney says the film had been tampered with in post-production, but I'll say, no, it hadn't. No. Somebody would have done it yep. when it was During being production. During production. So I think it's a page from a... Oh, it was probably vandals. Probably oh, some vandals busted in. Probably broke in. Yeah. yeah. And they probably wrote rude words everywhere. That's right. Probably carved their names into the desks. Mm. Um, but, yeah, so that... Uh, it's from a Playboy or a Hustler or something, isn't it? The page, the specific page. I mean, it's very rude. Wow, that is rude. That is rude. Yeah. Um, yeah. And How does uh, anybody find anything? Yeah. The studio wasn't aware. Of this. this says that. Uh, I've the, only seen the rescuers down under, so I would have completely missed this. That one's even ruder. <laughs> the studio wasn't aware of the flash of nudity until 1999, when they had to formally issue a recall of the 1992 home video version, oh. which viewers had found the naked lady. I guess the question is: Look, maybe th- this isn't the website for it, but I wonder who the lady is. Like, does anybody know who it is? I'll, I'll have a go. Well, this is a question as well. Yeah. And look, there simply isn't time. If you go, if you watch the rescuers on Disney Plus, is it still? It's one hundred percent not there. Okay, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, they 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 edit out a bust, don't they? They do. They didn't they edit? Didn't they edit down Splash? They did. Now so she's, she's got, got long hair instead long of a hair butt. Of the butt. Yeah. Yeah. Here we bloody go. Oh my god, that woman's a mermaid. She's got long hair and no butt. <laughs> they edited that ADR. <laughs> uh, I can't find the name of the person, but I'm sure there was. I remember seeing that like they specifically found like wow. what it was from. Yeah. Bit rude though. Very rude. Don't mind telling you that, Mason. Mm. Speaking of rude, you know, there's an urban legend that in the movie Teen Wolf from 1985, if you don't know, it's Michael J. Fox, mm-hmm. and he's good at basketball, yeah. but he's also a werewolf. Yes, but initially he's not good at basketball, right? No, and oh, he's, he's okay. Okay, right. But also, Michael J. Fox is mm. three feet tall. That's true. Like, yes. You know, but not, that's yeah, not to yeah, say yeah. you can't be good at basketball. But then it turns out there's nothing in the rule book that says a werewolf can't play basketball. I'd imagine there wouldn't be that. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you could write a blanket rule that, like, a human would have to be a human person to play or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, you know, they obviously forgot to do that. Yeah. That's how Air Bud happened. There's a Jack Drew sketch on YouTube. Yeah. About somebody in a basketball franchise who's trying to put in all the rules of, like, they can't be a ghost, they can't be a whatever. <laughs> oh, Let's put a fun. link in the episode description. Maybe. Yeah. You probably could just recall the link. And I just could. Re- just tell us the URL. That's I'll do that right now. <laughs> Uh, so in Teen Wolf, there is a scene where it looks like a man has his penis out in the Whoa. crowd, right? And does he? No. But it turns out that it's been cut off in a number of the versions. His penis has been cut off? Yes. In the movie? Yeah, they had to do it. Whoa. The Teen Wolf did it. But it's actually a woman, and I think just the, they reckon that the front of her pants are undone because she was wearing tight jeans as a number of members of the crowd were, and they just undid them to be more comfortable. And you're supposed to like do them up and then cheer in the scene and whatever. And but this person didn't, so it just looks like just persons a person's pants are slightly open. Sounds like a bunch of crowd cheering a penis, an exposed <laughs> penis. <laughs> well, that's not what happened, Mason. Wow. Yeah. Well, well, well. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, have you got another one? Or is uh, that it? No, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Good night, Australia. This is from the. Wi- this says Wizard Oz. Wizard Oz. It doesn't say the this Wizard the, of Oz. The the Munchkin that yeah. hung itself one. Did a little person playing a munchkin in The Wizard of Oz hang themselves to death? To death? Not just as a, a goof. Yeah. Uh, from one of the trees on the set. Fans detected a disturbing image in the background uh, as the, uh, the the group Dorothy the Scarecrow, Toto and the Tin, Ta- the 
Tim, the Tim Tam. The Tim Tam. Speaking of Australia. Uh, that's Good night, right. Australia. Walked the yellow brick road, which looked like a munchkin hanging from a rope, but the truth is it's actually a large bird who stood up and flack, flapped its wings on the set. Sick. Yeah. I mean, Wait, so it was supposed to be a person that was actively hanging. Oh, hello, Ollie. How did you get in? It's dog time. It's dog time, everyone. Mm. Many think Oz star Judy Garland, currently cancelled. Yeah. <laughs> Tales of alleged little people debauchery while making the film helped spread this false legend. Yeah. I mean, they put her on meth. They did, and, yeah. And MGM put her on like a severe contract and weight loss pills and meth and whatever, and they, they tortured that poor woman for years. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. But no, it was a bird. Apparently it was a bird. Yeah. I think that's cool. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Did we do an episode on... Just like behind the scenes drama, I think we did. We well, I was going to mention that. We're going to come back to that. Well, I mean, the the Richard Gear thing because we did Hollywood beefs. That's right. Yes, we do have an episode on that if you do want to go back and hear hear specifically about where the rumor started of uh, Richard Gear. I know you're going to do it. Where Richard Gear got a gerbil stuck in his butt. I was drinking a soda. I know you were. And in summary, uh, basically, Stallone made it up. (laughs) That's. Probably what happened. Yeah, because Richard Gear ate too much meat in his <laughs> he ate a, ate a, a hot dog chicken. covered in oh, yeah, it was, it was a chicken, chicken it was covered in a, mustard and yeah. grease in his car. It's still his car, car, yeah. And they've been enemies ever since. <laughs> it, that's I mean, the, the to me, the wildest part of that story has always been that Richard Gear ate a chicken <laughs> in a car. He doesn't seem like a kind of guy who would. If anything, he would have. He feels like a knife and fork. <laughs> You know? Not in a car. If Richard Gere seems like a guy who eats a burger with a knife and fork. With a gerbil in him. Yes, in his bum. <laughs> Here's one. Disney animators secretly slipped hidden sexual messages uh, into the movie The Lion King. Who did Disney? Disney. Walt Disney. Walt Disney. Oh, we do have a Walt Disney one. But basically the moment where Simba, like, goes slumps down into <laughs> some grass. Okay. And then there's some, like... Some like debris, mm. like flies up into the sky, yes. and it spells out "sex" in the sky Whoa. briefly. Right, that makes people think about it. Yeah, but apparently, uh, according to and what, then all their popcorn buckets fly <laughs> off their laps, <laughs> and there's a cinema. sex in the air. Yeah, that's right. Uh, according to Disney animator Tony Sito, it actually Sito. it actually says S- a guy, Okay, in Australia, yeah. side note. That would be the nickname for either a guy who sits down all the time, or he never sits. down. He hasn't never sat sat down. Yeah. Never sits down. Uh, but apparently it says – it is there, but it says SFX. Oh. And I think they might have taken that out even mm. still because they don't want people to whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. All of these are rude. They don't, you don't, they don't want people to masturbate in the theatre for the <laughs> thought of special effects or possibly sound effects. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Well, it's true. Yeah. What do you got, Mason? Okay, this is very – this is, I think, America-specific because we don't have these ads in, in Australia. But uh, – is it the, isn't the Nicole Kidman AMC ads? Because we don't have those. We don't have those either. God, they're which is wild. Robin is blind. You'd think Australia's own, our Nicole Kidman, would record a local one for like Hoyts True. or Greater Union or. God, the Hoyts ads suck, don't they? All mm. the local ones. You get like a car dealership ad where it's a local guy going, come in, I'll rip you off. I'll rip you off for a lot of money. <laughs> There's one that's, I think it's that I get at my local cinema and it's like for like a, I think it's for some sort of local accountants and they're still rapping in it. Oh, the I guy rapping yeah. in it. Come in and we'll rip you off. Yeah, yeah. But I love, I, more than anything, I, I wish we could do an episode on this, but we can't because we'd have to record, we'd have to go in the, in the cinema and record the audio. Maybe we could, yeah. but it's always like, there's always like a regional ad and it'll be like, Nay, nay, chicken bandura. Get some fried chicken in the heart of bandura or whatever. And you're like, maybe I will get some fried chicken. But also like, where is that even? I don't know. And also <laughs> I ate earlier, so I'm not hungry. <laughs> anyway, it's the, it's the Taco Bell Chihuahua. Remember okay, Yoki yeah, Taco yeah. Bell? So the, the, the rumor is that the Taco Bell Chihuahua died in a freak accident. In the late 1990s, Gidget the Chihuahua became one of the most iconic TV advertising mascots of all time by promoting Taco Bell. Would this be in the similar time to the the Was Up guys? Yes. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, America embraced the tiny... What was his voice? Or was it just a dog? It was the voice of Carlos Alazraki. Okay, I'm going to squickle this up. Uh, And he declared, Yo quiero Taco Bell. I want Taco Bell. But when Taco Bell stopped using the dog in commercials in 2001, fans whispered that Gidget had died run over by a train. Damn. It's, that's cool. However, it wasn't true. No? Gidget continued her Hollywood career appearing in Legally Blonde 2. She was euthanized in 2009. <laughs> Good to know. It's Here we go. Following a heart attack, it said. Let's see. Oh, my God. Yeah, right? Here we go. Everyone knows this. 
And so it's a chihuahua going to see another one. Mm. God, this is loud. <laughs> oh, the dog, Mason. Yes. The chihuahua looks at the chihuahua's going to see the lady chihuahua. Oh, yes. But actually walked past and went to a Taco Bell. Whoa. Oh, my goodness. Quiero Taco Bell. Wow. <laughs> nice. What? It's got a lot of, what's the word, rhythm? It's certainly got a lot of rhythm. It's got a beat you can dance to, James. That's true. Uh, Carl, Carlos Alas Rocky is uh, Rocco on Rocco's Modern Life. I love Rocco's Modern there Life, maybe. Didn't That's it come right. back? Probably. And it was Rocco's even more modern life. That's right. <laughs> Very modern. Here's another Disney one about sex. Nice. Uh, apparently a disgruntled Disney animator tasked with drawing the VHS cover of The Little Mermaid Drew an erect penis on it. Whoa. And Disney never noticed. Wow. Until they did. Yeah. Now, if you've you seen called this... it the big boner <laughs> instead of the little mermaid. If you look at Do this. Do you see where I've gone with that? Yeah, no, that's good. Because I've, I've kept the. Yeah. And then I've changed little to big. Yep. And then I've changed mermaid to boner there. <laughs> you've done all of those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's I actually... think me explaining the process makes it fun. I like the too. rhythm of it. Mm. So if you look there. Oh, yeah. It's kind okay. of like a boner. Sure. It could be. Mm. Uh, no? Yeah. It's boner enough. That's right. Mm. But uh, apparently he said, yeah, I just drew it late night and it wasn't an act of like sabotage or anything. I just, it just happened to come out that way. But yeah. boy, does it look like a dick. I'll tell you that much, Mason. <laughs> what next? What's next? Oh, here's one. Uh, do we want to talk about Marilyn Manson? That guy sucks. Fuck Marilyn Manson. Yeah, don't worry about him. It's, he looks like the guy from The Wonder Years. Oh, yeah. That's the thing. The guy from The Wonder Years, he grew up to be Marilyn Manson. Right. But he didn't. They're two different people. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that's right. I'm, I'm pretty sure the guy from The Wonder Years is... Loving that. He's loving that comparison. Are you Marilyn Manson? No, I'm not. I'm not. The guy from uh, Wondies is a lawyer now. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. All right, here's one. Charlie Chaplin lost a Charlie Chaplin lookalike contest. Whoa. That's right. In the wake of the Little Tramp success in silent movies, Charlie Chaplin lookalike contest popped up all, all over the country. Did they? No. I don't think they would have. I, I mean, what, what were people doing, though? In, in life, not a yeah. lot. It's also not a hard look to replicate. That's true. Yeah. And it's true, Charlie Chaplin. It's just himself Hitler ended, in a black suit. That's right. He ended one contest as a joke but never made it to the finals. So that's true apparently. Oh, well, there you go. When he lost, the actor reportedly said he was tempted to teach the other competitors his signature walk. Mmm. You know, but didn't. Th- ultimately, yeah. The Hitler one. The Hitler one, yeah. But ultimately didn't, right? Mm. Have you seen the Chaplin, the Robert Downey Jr. movie? No, apparently he's very good in it. I've heard that too. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. But I have seen Oppenheimer. He's good in that too. Yeah, I agree. That's right. Uh, apparently a man can be seen jumping off a bridge to his death in the background of a, a 1995 Leonardo DiCaprio movie, The Basketball Diaries. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, if you look closely, it looks like something falls off the bridge. Like you can see it, whatever, whatever. It's behind Marky Mark Wahlberg is in it. But according to Snopes, no, this isn't true. And apparently like there were no, at the time where this was filmed, there was no report of deaths or anything like this. So okay. it's just like something might have fallen off the bridge, like a garbage bag or whatever. Do you think it inspired it the event, person. the real-life event, where the uh, the tour bus of the Dave Matthews Band... Showered everybody in human excrement? That's correct. When they, they, they the, the, the driver or whoever was involved uh, <laughs> evacuated the contents of the portable toilet off a bridge... And there was a there was a boat of tourists underneath. <laughs> yes, okay. that is true. That is true. That is not an urban legend. Wow. Yeah. yeah. D- Dave Matthews insisted. I think I was on the something awful forums when that happened. And no somebody doubt. Was like somebody was either like I got showered in feces or whatever, or they were like I was the one showering people in feces. <laughs> you know. Maybe they were both there. Maybe they were both there. Could have been. It's a big big forums. Maybe they were brothers. Here's one for this topic. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Rogers was a Vietnam sniper. Oh. In the 1990s, a myth spread that the lovable TV children's show host, Fred Rogers of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, concealed a covert military past which included being a sniper during the Vietnam War. However, Rogers was never in the military at all. Before doing TV, he was educated to be a minister. Oh, there you go. And draft dodger. Oh, wow. No, I don't Typical. know. That's true. Yeah. Have Apparently very seen, nice. Yeah. By all accounts. Oh, Mr. Rogers. Yeah, yeah. A I'm nice guy. About. Have you seen Confessions of a Dangerous Mind? Uh, yes. It's great. Sam Rockwell one. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. I think we watched that together on a DVD. You might have, might have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for people who don't know, mm. uh, it's about Chuck Barris, the yeah. uh, TV game, game show, show host, host and creator of uh, such shows as like the, the Newlywed Game and the... The Love Connection or love whatever. Connect, the Love Connection. One of those ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, cre- he, cre- he created basically the concept of the – oh, it's the dating game. That's what he invented. There we go. The, the very concept of like, you know, one person meets or, you know, learns about three suitors and chooses from whatever. One person meets another person. But he, cl- he wrote a number of books, but he wrote a biography called Confessions of a Dangerous Mind in which he claimed – 
who also have been a, a, a covert the assassin from the CIA. Yeah, that's right. Was it a joke? Did we ever figure out whether that was a... Uh... I mean, he, he said it, he, he claimed it a lot. And then it was turned into a movie. So it's yeah. uh, with um, directed by Clooney, George Clooney. Maybe, And yeah. it's Sam Rockwell's in it. Yeah. Yeah. It's anyway, good. It's probably not true. Yeah. I mean, the CIA repeatedly was like, no, but they would. They would, wouldn't they? They would, wouldn't they? Too bloody would, them. wouldn't they? Yeah. I'm wondering, but here's the thing. I'm wondering if these lines, when did, when did the book Confessions of a Dangerous Mind come out? Let's find out. We can go on together uh, with confessions, confessions of, of a, a dangerous, dangerous mind. mind. A dangerous mind. That's right. I reckon probably the 80s. So I reckon. I'm caught in a trap. 84. Oh, there you go. Okay. Mm. So that probably, so that predates, I, I, I feel like that's probably like a case of telephone. Yeah, okay, like Chuck yeah, Barris yeah. did this, and then somebody was like, "Well, what if somebody? What if Mister Rogers was also a secret guy?" Yeah. yeah. Uh, apparently, the the movie says it's depicting the fictional life mm. of game show host. Blah 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 blah. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Yeah. But you know, good movie. Who knows? Really, mm-hmm. who knows what anything is true of? <laughs> Do you think? Yes. Cool. So my turn or your turn? I can't remember. I can't remember, and I refuse to figure it out. Here we mm-hmm. go. The filmmakers on 2019 Cats movie originally intended to make the cats look as lifelike as possible. That we know. Uh, they also look horrendous. I've never seen it though. I've never. Neither have I. Should we do a commentary? Well, it's hard because it's a musical. So you kind of want to, like, we do commentary with the subtitles. That's true. So you'd think that, like, we'd have to have headphones, is what I'm we saying. We just look at the subtitles and they'll say, it'll say Jazzy Beat Stars. Jazzy, yeah. James mm-hmm. Corden is, is annoying in this scene, probably. I love mm-hmm. James Corden. I'm his, I'm his biggest defender. <laughs> um, but apparently they, there was people would have heard this. There was CGI buttholes in the movie, mm. so this was a nightmare to work on. Is because apparently they got to the point where they're like, we're actually doing something. We're freeing all the performers of mocap suits and technology. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. We're gonna let them just dance, and then we'll mm. do the cats stuff yeah. on top of them. And then and- Idris Elba was like, hey, everybody, why don't we just show all our buttholes? <laughs> and it spread like wildfire in the cast and everybody's like, yeah, yeah. let's do it. <laughs> and then the visual effects guys were like, why don't we fix this? <laughs> why don't we freaking fix this? So um, apparently, yeah, so so then they just had to like CGI them like badly and quickly because apparently Tom Hooper, who directed it, wasn't familiar with this kind of – you can't just mocap a bunch of people when they're not mocapped, you know what I mean? It's a very difficult thing to do. It bombed horrendously. But according to uh, a visual effects person on it who spoke to the Daily Beast, we were looking at the playbacks and we were, we were like, what the hell? You guys see that? And we paused it and we went to call our supervisor and we were like, there's a fucking asshole in there. There's buttholes. <laughs> it wasn't prominent, but you saw it. Oh, it wasn't a prominent spot. So ball. apparently it was unintentional and it was just because the, there were folds at the back under the tail that made it kind of look like there was a butthole. Mm. But so. it's all CG, so, you know, yeah. those folds you have had to make yourself. Yep, absolutely. You freak, you bunch of freaks. <laughs> so there you go. Wow. So that's cool. Uh, we should watch that movie for some reason. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 For contents. Yeah, for content. For content. Yeah. Uh, here's one. This one's delightful. Oh. Curb your enthusiasm saved a man from death row. This one is great. Right? Yeah. So a man was charged with murder. Yep. Juan Catalan. Good, by the way. Was, they got him. Yeah, that's James. What? Reserve your judgment. <laughs> yeah. For, and it is heavy <laughs> until you get to the end of this. James, did you read an article that said curb your enthusiasm got a man executed? Yeah. For the murder he did? Yeah. Well, wrong. Oh, is that an urban legend? Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, Police allege Juan Catalan killed Martha Puebla in the San Fernando Valley in 2003, but Catalan insisted he and his daughter were at a Dodgers game at the time. Juan's lawyers found they were shooting an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm at Dodgers Stadium that night and obtained footage from the show. The attorney said, I got to one of the scenes and there is my client sitting in a corner of the frame eating a hot dog with his daughter. I nearly jumped out of my chair and he was released. So there you go. God damn, that is insane. And then the police were like, Wow. That must have been pretty embarrassing for That's the police, right. but also, you know, you're allowed to make one mistake. Yeah, you're allowed to condemn <laughs> one man to death because you reckon something. It's cool, I reckon. That's what I reckon. Yeah, that's what you reckon. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is one from the James Bond movie Goldfinger. Mm-hmm. It's been rumored that actor Shirley Eaton. Uh, who famously appeared covered uh, in head to toe gold paint? Do you remember? Gold. She was gold finger. painted woman. Mm-hmm. Apparently, uh, she's got gold fingers. And the rest of her and little toesies, gold <laughs> little toesies. She, she suffered skin suffocation. Mm. 
mm. and uh, died. But no, that woman didn't die. No, that's true. And also, they didn't paint her back. No, the the bat the her, well in the in the movie it looks like she's all covered. It's in a gold. onesie, is it? No, no, but they 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 just left the back open so she could breathe. Oh, like but, she just didn't paint the back. But I'm looking at the back here. Oh, then I'm thinking of something else. You must else. be thinking of the front. Maybe the front. Yeah. Probably thinking of the front. Cool stuff, man. Mm. So, yeah, no, not not dead and a woman who lived and may still be alive today. Mm. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. That's right. Don't you think? Mm. Yeah. Apparently, yeah, she, was in, she went to the Skyfall premiere. So unless they wheeled her corpse in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, her beautiful golden corpse. That's exactly right. Yeah. What do you want to hear about? The, the Paul is dead? Rumor, James. Paul is dead. Which Paul is... McCartney. Oh yeah, I like that. Or one. Donald Trump. Something about Donald Trump. <laughs> we could do both. We could do both. Okay, yeah. I'll do. Look, the mother of all celebrity death hoaxes began when it was alleged that Beatles legend Paul McCartney had died in a 1966 car crash. This isn't really Hollywood, but oh that's, no. That's well, fine. he was in a Hollywood movie. <laughs> yeah, that's true. The car's rolling. My rib cage. Or my organs. Or my organs. Wait, no, he's from Liverpool. My yeah. organs. My organs. All my organs. Mm-hmm. Uh, according to the story, the three Beatles bandmates secretly replaced him with a double but then planted clues in their albums to let p- fans know that Paul was dead. Why this, would you? Is this true? No. Oh. Or is well, it? That'd be crazy. It would be crazy. For example, the Beatles Ab- album Abbey Road showed Paul barefoot because he was, in fact, deceased. The classic move. Yeah. Because when famously you bury a loved one, you put him in their coffin with no shoes on. <laughs> it's true. Although McCartney went on to a long wings and solo career, he has outlived two other Beatles and is now 71. Well, he's doubled it. That's true, yeah. yeah. Who knows how, how old that guy is. Mm. Also, I recently saw a video of him, I don't know who filmed it, like probably his granddaughter or something like that, of him attempting to do the Abbey Road walk just by himself across that same, so and he nearly sad. gets run over. <laughs> just a car just screams through. <laughs> Imagine if he died there. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'd yeah. have to get a third Paul McCartney. Yeah, that's right. God. Well, they couldn't do it then, could they? <laughs> well, what if they were like, look, I know it's tragic what happened to Paul, because he got destroyed by a car <laughs> on camera Twice. and it was on TikTok. <laughs> People put it on TikTok. But now it's time to clear the slate and admit that, in fact, he was killed in 1966 and we're just going to replace him again <laughs> yeah. for, the, for the second time. <laughs> we're going to replace him with that guy from Queen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Adam Lambert. Adam Lambert. Cool. Yeah. Uh, you probably know this one, that uh, NASA faked the moon landing but not only that, mm-hmm. director Stanley. I knew that. Yeah, director Stanley Kubrick was hired to uh, to do it. Mm. And apparently, one of the hints towards this was if you watch the movie The Shining, Danny, who's the boy in The Shining, mm. and then played by Ewan McGregor in the sequel movie Doctor, Doctor Sleep, Sleep, which is mm. actually quite good. Danny's wearing an Apollo Eleven USA top, <laughs> so it's supposed to be a little hint, little like, tip off there. Yeah. And the reason for the wise, you that's know? right. Yeah, that's right. The people who know, we're on the inside. We get it. And the reason why you, they might think this is because the only it's said, it was said that the only filmmaker that was capable of pulling off something like this was Stanley Kubrick because of what he did on 2001 A Space Odyssey. There's even a nod to it in one of the Bond films where he runs through oh, like a yeah. moon landing set or whatever. Hmm. I mean, this is something that people genuinely believe. Well, quite frankly, also, I'll be real. I don't give a fuck if we went to the moon. <laughs> Who cares, right, at this point? Hmm. Are we going back soon or something isn't that happening probably yeah i'm sure it was a big deal at the and it'll time. be great for us won't it yeah <laughs> really good real benefits for the, for the for the well space race if you do it you know it does it has the drive innovation there is there is you know there is proof that that is the case velcro was one of the examples apparently a, right. computing powers but of course space... when was the last time i was gonna say when's the last time but you have velcro shoes on yeah so. exactly and a velcro vest and a velcro underwear <laughs> In multiple pieces. That's right. It's a nightmare to take on and off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but of course, that's also. When the Velcro's ripping, don't come a knock, and that's what it says <laughs> in your bedroom door. <laughs> zip, zip, zip. Zip, zip, zip. But when, of course, space travel is privatized, which it, which it often is now, um, then that innovation stays, you know, within a particular company. So that's, that's not right. necessarily as good. But anyway, the point is. Uh, the, the Yeah, so it was in a group chat, one of the terrible group chats I'm in, and it came up, something about the moon landing, and someone was like, yeah, you know, who knows about the moon landing? We'll never know. Oh and I'm God. like... Tell me off air who that guy is. I will, but I'm like, no, it happened. Yeah. Like, and, like, at this point, it's too big of a thing that it... Like, you've, you've talked about this before. I think you, you're the one that told me this, but... I said the moon landing was fake. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there are too many... 
components that someone wouldn't have just leaked this yeah. by accident. Or, or they just, had a crisis yeah, of conscience or just whatever. Just went, fuck it, yeah. whatever, I'm yeah. 90, yeah, it was fake. Yeah. You know, and here's the and proof. I go, well, actually, if they, if they did that, then somebody would kill them. Well, yeah, then they'd have family who were like, they were killed, and you know, God. and then you'd have to pay somebody, yeah. and then a blah, 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 you know, it goes, goes on forever. The web continues out forever. The internet has fucking ruined minds. Everybody's got Whatever brain al- algorithm you get caught in, it just fucks your brain into mush. Yeah. Just awful. Yeah. And anyway. We do this podcast. That's we do. Why that, that brain, so, yeah, our brain's got turned to mush. We're in a good algorithm. Yeah, we're in a good. We're in a good one. Okay, James, you'll love this one. <laughs> Will I? Uh, according to this legend, which ha- which has some variations. Is this about William H Macy? No, there isn't one about him. Anyway, just so you know, go okay, on. Right. I was just thinking about Mystery Man the other day. It's a good movie. Pretty good, right? Yeah. Apparently, Danny DeVito was going to direct that. He didn't. He didn't. Well, there you go. He wanted more script control or something, and then they were like, "Well, I thought it turned out pretty well, Danny mm. DeVito." So, and then Ben Stiller was going to direct it, but he was like, "I don't want to do a lot of work." But I'll be in it. I'll be in it. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Anyway, according to this legend, which has some variations, a stranger stopped and helped Donald Trump after he was involved in a car crash. Oh yeah. And the grateful mogul later paid the man's mortgage. According to what the Donald said on an episode <laughs> of his show, The Apprentice, the story's true. <laughs> that that guy has never paid for a single fucking thing in his life. Yep. I would be. Shocked if any of that is true. Mm. I wouldn't, you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if that happened to him and, and he just and he forgot. Like that would be the story if it was a story at all. Mm. Where, who is that guy? What do you mean? Who's Doesn't the guy? Say. Doesn't say. Just yeah. the guy. But as as I said, this story has some variations. One of which would be there was no car crash, and also Donald Trump didn't pay for the guy's mortgage or anyone's mortgage. Yeah, or helped anyone. That what I mean. What that guy is just—he's known for lying, and that I think is the appeal of him. Yeah. Like that thing happened recently where he went into a restaurant and was like, "All the meals are on me," and then he just left. <laughs> That's great. He does this shit all the yeah. time. He does, he's never paid. A, he famously doesn't pay anybody. No, he didn't say. Look, he didn't say the meals are on me or whatever. He said something like meals for everyone, <laughs> which is not technically. <laughs> that's technically true. Yeah. If, you, if it, everybody in a restaurant, technically there is a meal there is for, a everyone. for everyone. So, yeah. Well, yeah, he, yeah, he's right then. Yeah. Well, but I think he's due an apology from you. Yeah, you're right. But I'm sorry, Mister Pre- My Real President. But <laughs> the thing is, right. That is the appeal of this guy, right? Yeah. He's funny because he's a he's a fucking lunatic, and like, and he just lies all the time. You know, yeah. people like him because of this. He's mm. a great showman. Like, je- he's terrible, but he's a great <laughs> showman. Yeah, he's no Ron DeSantis. That's but... so true. <laughs> uh, Poltergeist. Should, yeah, should we do one, about that? one more each? Yeah. Okay. So apparently, a bunch of people died who worked on this, and they say that it was like supernatural in nature. But no, it was just a bunch of people in that movie just died which mm. is just sad yeah yeah oh and you know that train thing where the train came towards the, the thing I, and boy, everyone went, oh the train's coming yeah, yeah the yeah. train's gonna kill us and they all ran out of theaters they didn't apparently they didn't really interesting yeah mm. Mm. what else mason okay look i'm gonna give you i'm gonna give you one more okay uh the rumor child actor ralphie from a christmas story appeared in porn movies the beloved 1983 holiday, holiday movie about an adorable boy's obsession with getting a Red Ryder BB gun for Christmas. I need to watch that Starred movie. Peter Billingsley. A rumor spread like wildfire that he grew up to star in porn films. Peter Billingsley. But they had the wrong actor. He's in, in reality, Man. Scotty Schwartz, who got his tongue stuck to a frozen flagpole in the film, went on to work in the adult film industry in non-sexual roles. Cool. Yeah. Just a background dude or whatever. Yeah. In Scotty's X-rated adventure, Schwartz's character attends an orgy without having sex with anyone. Oh, that's... Yeah, okay, good. just checking it out. Yeah, just checking it out. Yeah. That's cool. So there's a few other things that I guess we could talk about. The Superman curse, you know, a number of the actors who have played Superman have met an untimely and unfortunate demise. Uh, yeah, some of them have died, but most of them haven't. That's true. I think all the Superboys are alive. Mm-hmm. Dean Cain is alive. Henry mm-hmm. Cavill's alive. Brandon Routh's alive. At time of recording. That's right, time of recording, Yeah. Um, James James Dean's car, you know about that? No. It's a cursed car. He died in it, and then uh-huh. apparently anybody who bought that car died in it. That's not true. Where is it now? I don't know. In hell. Should we buy it? Yeah, we should buy it. We should buy the car. It's also like a speedy zippy car. So if you bought James Dean's car and then you were fanging around in it, yeah, there's a good chance that you probably would be in a car accident. Paul Hydra. McCartney. Paul McCartney. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Uh, I saw another it? one, which was the Titanic PCP rumor. We're basically on the set of the Titanic. Oh, yes. We've a bunch discussed of, this, I think. But, yeah. Well, yeah. A bunch of people got – somebody spiked the clam chowder with PCP and everyone tripped balls and had to go to That's hospital. Right. That's true. I've actually made a video on it specifically. That's right. Yeah. And was the culprit ever found? 
No, they think it was. Uh, we're gonna talk about it in the video. Also, one of the guys who's in Titanic, I forgot to commented on it. Was like, mm. I'm in this movie, and like I'm one of the scientist guys in it. And um, he's like, yeah, it's true, but I could tell you more stuff about it. So I should reach out to should. to him. Yeah, what's the actor's name? Um, let me find. I saw that comment recently. It's not Victor Garber, Mason. You no, idiot. I wouldn't say that. Well, it's not. Nicholas Cascone. Ooh. That's cool. That is cool. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, everybody trip balls, including a little kid. They got a little kid with it, so that's that's not as cool. No. Yeah. Although, you know, it's probably a valuable life lesson on how to trip balls. Absolutely. Oh, he was in Star Trek The Next Generation. Has Ensign tripping balls? Yes, that's right, yeah. Um, is <laughs> Captain Picard, my balls. Ah, the dog's back. Hello, Ollie. Give me here. Get, back get me here. <laughs> All right, I've got a couple here which um, just are fun. Oh, yeah. Because I, I, I just saw, as I was researching Ur- Urban Legends, <laughs> uh-huh. I just got a few that are just Urban Legends in general. Oh, so yes. I'd mention these. Uh, Baby Train is an Urban Legend which claims that a small town had an unusually high birth rate because a train would pass through the town at 5 a.m. and blow its whistle. Waking up all the residents. That's rude, by the way. Mm, very rude. I did rude. once live near a train crossing. It was annoying. Uh, since it was too late to go back to sleep, uh, and too early to get up, couples would have sex, and this resulted in a mini baby boom. Okay. Yeah, too right. early. Too early. No, thank mm, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> that doesn't factor in the reality of most people want to sleep more than anything Just else. go back to sleep. Yeah. Uh, and this one I love because we were talking about cryptids recently. And this is, that's probably before people would just get on their phones. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Do you remember talking about cryptids the other way? Yes, yeah, some people emailed in to say, why didn't you mention drop bears, the most Australian cryptid? Yeah. And that's because – Nobody who tells the story of a drop bear thinks drop bears are real. Yes. We just um, tell it to tourists mostly mm. so they worry about a bear falling on them. But yeah. actually, then we don't think they're real. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so come out. Yeah, come out there. Go into the forest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this one is apparently the Cat Man of Greenock is an okay. urban legend since the 1970s of a man in Greenock, Scotland, who eats rats with his hands. What the fuck else would he eat them with? Knife and fork, Richard Gear style. <laughs> Just extract the rat, <laughs> eat it with a knife and fork. Uh, he heard the name Catman due to rumours that he lived with and cared for a group of wild cats. So that's a oh, fun meow. one to end on, isn't it? Very fun. Well, those are good urban legends. We've, I think we've debunked some of them, but some are real. I think so, yeah. Yeah. I reckon 50-50, though. Yeah, probably. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the Donald Trump one's probably true. That's probably true. Probably paid a guy's mortgage. He probably definitely did yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He probably hasn't always been in debt and he paid that guy's mortgage. That's right. Definitely, yeah. All right, should we move on to the next segment of the show? Yeah. What is that? It's what we're reading. What? What we're going to read. What? What we're reading, what we're going to read, for God's sake. I know you recall it, but I couldn't recall. Okay. I'm doing the theme. What are we reading today? <laughs> well, this is the segment where we talk about what we've been reading and watching and doing. That's exactly right. What have you been doing? This week I watched a movie, but the twist, Australian movie. What do you what? think about Why? that? Yeah. Can you even believe that? Which Crocodile Dundee did you watch? <laughs> One, two, and how many are there? There's three, and then there's the, the fantastic. Yeah, I watched all of those. Mr. I watched Paul all of those. Logan, uh, but I was listening to uh, the podcast Special Features. Oh, yeah. So our pals, Cam and Alexi, used to do a total new reboot. Podcast. They get a new podcast where they talk about movies, if you can oh. even believe it. And I listened to an episode from a little while back where they talked about the best movies of 2023 so far. And so obviously, Red Notice yep. and Quantum Mania yep. and. Um, Heart and Stone. Yeah, Heart and Stone. and I've got an update on Heart Black of- Adam and so forth yeah. and all those. That was last year, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know Heart of Stone? Yes. Um, there was a guy in my gym mm-hmm. and we were talking. Oh, yeah. And uh, he's like, I it's didn't. It's not like you. No, no, it is actually, yeah. Um, and anyway, there was a, uh, talking about the soccer, like because Australia was recently uh, knocked out of the World Cup. Mm-hmm. Uh, boo. But um, <laughs> I'm like, did you watch the soccer and whatever? Uh-huh. You know, girls, they didn't get up. That's okay. Maybe mm-hmm. next time. He's like, I wasn't. I'm not really a big fan of soccer or whatever. But I did watch this movie on Netflix. I'm like, what did you watch? And he goes, Heart of Stone. Yeah, and I'm nice. like, how was it? And he said it was incredible. He literally said next level. Next Those were his level. words. Yeah, wow. Okay. So, yeah. Right. And then I said, you're going to love the movie Red Notice. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Which, That's great stuff. To be frank, I haven't seen. Yeah, yeah. But uh... <laughs> anyway, amongst all those recommendations that they thought were great, <laughs> Cam and Alexi, they thought all those movies were great. Uh, Alexi also recommended a movie, an Australian movie called Limbo, uh, directed by Ivan Sen, and it's got Simon Baker in it. Simon Baker, and the mentalist. Like a, yeah, yeah. And it's got like a, it's like a, it, it, it premiered on, in a film festival earlier in the year. It was, yeah. on, it was on the ABC quite recently, but I missed it. But it's, uh, it's, from Madman films. Yeah, yeah. So it's like this neo-noir crime film. It's in, in the black upper. and white. It's in black and white. Um, 
hate the Outback, which means I'd like this. Right, and it's set in this town called Limbo, Ooh. which is like a Cooper Pedy style town. So yeah. like some of it's underground. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. he plays this detective with like a lot, lot of, lot of problems. Detective Limbo. That's exactly right. How got low a, can you go, Detective Limbo? Very low. I got a lot of problems. <laughs> uh, and and he's he's been he's been sent to this town to review this cold case about a, a missing girl from twenty years ago. Yeah. And he's but of course the uh, the townsfolk. They don't, they don't care for him. Why? He's not from around there. And, a, and he's not that good at limbo? And he's always limboing. No, he's always limboing. Oh, he's always limboing. He's always, he, just, he just swans into town yeah. and he wins all the limbo competitions. <laughs> that would be annoying. Just like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's really good. Very atmospheric. The, the black and white. What's it on? ABC, did you say? No, I bought it on YouTube. Oh, YouTube. It was, right. on, it was on the ABC once. They just, they just screened it. Oh, okay. Like a regular movie, if you can imagine that. I can't. It's actually. just on YouTube. It was, it was, oh, check it, it out. Was, it was 10 bucks at the time, so I'm like, that's a good deal. Sounds cool. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, really good performance. It's really good, really atmospheric. Simon Baker's very good in it. He's you know, if you just know him as the, the mentalist, I mean, you're correct, but also he's good, very good in this as How's well. How's he looking? Good shaved head, beard. Shaved head beard. Shaved head beard. A lot of tattoos. What? Yeah. Are you thinking of Simon Baker? I am thinking of Simon Baker, yeah. That's true. Oh my God. Okay, that sounds really cool. But yeah, like uh, very at- – and the, the black and white gives it this sort of surreal quality. especially. Yes. And also because it's in the outback and it's sort of this weird landscape. Would you say it gives it a dreamlike quality? I would say it does give it a dreamlike quality. Oh my God. Did you just read that off the internet? I'd never read anything. Okay. I Trace. wasn't going to start now, was I? No. Well, I actually watched, watched a movie too at the cinemas. It's called PlayStation Commercial 2023. Gran Turismo. You I did. Ba- based, that's based on a true story. Did you know that? Yeah, some of it's true apparently. Um, it's all right. Okay, great. It's probably too long. Should we have devoted an episode to it? No. Okay, great. I took my son to it and uh-huh. he was like, he liked it, but it was probably too long and like it was, it's it's way better than it should be. And everybody's like quite good in it and charismatic. Okay. David Harbour and the lead, which now I can't remember. Mm-hmm. Um, it's fun. Um, How hard does it feel like a PlayStation ad or a, well, or a, a lot of it, Turismo Well, a lot of it is like, you know, because if you don't know, the story is that a guy gets so good at Gran Turismo that he gets to drive race cars for real. Mm. And he's so good at race car driving because he knows all the tracks because he's and then he gets to drive Gran Turismo again. That's right. He gets so good at real life Formula One racing <laughs> because... they let him play the PlayStation again. Because <laughs> normally they say it's not allowed. They would have normally, yeah. That's right. Um but you know it's uh yeah. Great. It's, it's got, terrific. It's got uh Jimon Honsu who yeah, I that's like. True. Yeah. yeah, I don't think it's doing particularly well, but you know, if okay. you if you have to see a movie yeah. and you haven't seen this Heart one, of Stone. Totally. I mean, Heart of Stone sounds like it's next. You're giving very faint praise to this, but Heart of Stone sounds like it's next level. Well, that's so. what I was told. Yeah, so. You, uh, also, people might think I'm joking. That is an actual conversation that I had. Because mm. I'm in the real world too. A lot of people mm. don't know that. Do you think potentially that that guy you spoke to yeah. was director of Heart of Stone, some guy? <laughs> I can't was? rule it out. You can't I rule definitely it out, can you? Yeah. Might have been some guy who directed Heart of Stone. Yeah. So. Yeah. So that's fun. Yeah. Anyway, I will. Anyway, two very solid recommendations for us. I think <laughs> the the independent neo noir crime film and Heart and, of Stone and Heart of Stone and Gran Turismo commercial. Absolutely. I guess we, the, because video game. Well, like we've talked about recently, how you know Barbie made a billion dollars and Oppenheim is making hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the video game industry is like. It's next level, isn't it? Would you say it's next level? I mean, it's... You like, know, don't they make a billion dollars in like a week? I don't like to like throw a, that out yeah. there, but yeah, Don't is. they make a billion dollars in a week? Yeah, they all... So the idea of turning... The biggest industry is yeah, yeah. video games. So yeah. the idea of just, this is just, like, this is legitimately just an ad for Gran yeah. Turismo. That's not outside the realm of possibility, is it? Cost them next to nothing, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, the biggest media property... Yes. I don't know if this has changed, but of all time, is fucking GTA. Yeah, that's true. So, you know... yeah. Just looking what Gran Turismo movie made at the box office. Let's have a look. Oh, I can go see it at Victoria Gardens again. Ooh. Maybe I will. Maybe I will go see it. At Cheap tickets there, I think, usually, Maybe. almost every day. Uh, box office, $10 million. Oof. Deme- like in the US. We just don't think in general. That can't be right. <laughs> that's true. Wow. Well, ten- that's a... It looks expensive too. Yeah. Yeah. They, some of those cars might be real. They seem to be. Some yeah, of no, those David it, Harbors might be real. Some of them are, definitely. There's several of them. Um... I mean, it looks good. It like it's a good and the race. Now you have to race really against all of us, young man. <laughs> all these David Harbors. <laughs> but like, there's never a moment. They clone me in real life because <laughs> they have so much money. They must have. But yeah. uh yeah, it's um. Wow, that's crazy. That is crazy. Yeah. Uh cool. All right. Uh, anything else? Or should we move it along? Let's move it along. 
They reckon about $100 million to budget on that. So there you go. That's that's fucked. <laughs> well, they, they should have made it better then, shouldn't they? Mate, it's as good as it could be. And that is a compliment. <laughs> Great. Terrific. Put that on the poster. Our uh, next segment is called Letters. Yeah. Get some letters together. Here's the theme of letters. I'm ready. The classic one was letters, oh letters, we love you. Some letters, they're only a day away. We're going to hear right now. We're going to do letters. Feels good to be in the letters segment. If you do want to reach mm. the show, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod on Twitter or weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com. That's right. You got a letter, Mason? I'll Would you like one. me to letter? You should letter. This is from Broderick. I'm just going to – I haven't got a letter, but I can perfectly recall some letters I've had in the past. Sure, so. that's fine, but we don't really need that. We need new letters. So uh, we don't need your perfect recall for once. That's a shame. Broderick says, for the MCU's Fantastic Four movie, do you think we'll be getting another origin story or going the way of Spider-Man and the Batman and more or less skipping it? I believe in the past they've said that they're jumping over that. Okay. I don't remember whether that's 100% true. I mean, we've had it twice in recent memory. You can explain it also. You Aren't can... you the guys that went to space and got powers? Yeah. Yes. You can do it in five minutes. Yep. Like we've talked about uh, which Superman movie, which Superman comic book is it where they just do his origin in like one page? All of them. It's now. like Doomed Planet, something, uh, something. All Star maybe? Yeah, I think it might be All Star Superman. Yeah. But you can do that. You can do it in five minutes. You can have. The rocket launches and they're like, oh, no, Cosmic Rays, and they come back to Earth and you can do it in yep. two seconds. It's fine. Yeah, but you could literally just have somebody just say that. Yeah. You look at an infograph and they yeah. go, yeah. I don't go. need to know the state of Reed Richards' finances before he goes into space or whatever happened in the previous ones. I just don't want to see him at high school. As an adult man? Yeah. Interesting. Not again. Interesting you've done that. Yeah. But uh, no, I don't think it'll be an origin. Mm. I mean, that would be bad. But thank you for the tweet, Broderick. Very, very Mason, welcome. have you got a letter? Or I'm going to find one. I'm going to find one. It's from Manda. Oh, come on. I, I can wait. No, 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 that's all right. Okay. <laughs> Manda says, within this past week I've learned about the mysterious and many big things of Australia, as in giant sculptures of random things all across Australia. What is the deal with this? Do you see them everywhere? Explain. Yeah. So all around Australia, if you don't know, there are just giant shrines and monuments of Different things. Stuff and things. Koalas and big prawns, prawns and prawns and pineapples mm. and uh, Ned Kelly. Ned, big Ned, there's a big Ned Kelly who was our mm. local hero. That's right. Um, yeah, I, I always assumed that this is just a thing that happens the world over, is it not? Yeah, I, th- yeah, I think so, but I mean. But it seems like now I think, that I think no, about I think it, big like. Big things is. There must be, because they're. they're some of them are like, oh, it's a big thing, but it's also a cafe or whatever. Yeah. But some of them are just big things. Yeah. So. Who doesn't love a big thing? That's true. Yeah. I think maybe it stands out more in Australia because there's so much nothingness. Yeah. And then there's a big thing. Then there's a weird big thing. Yeah, yeah, big yeah. lemon or whatever. Big lemon or whatever. Mm. But yeah, no. Yeah, I built a big lemon or whatever. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, that is true. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what the deal with it is. It just is. Yeah. And I've seen some of them, but not all of them. Do you agree? I Agree very confidently with that. I should do more trips around Australia, but honestly, mm. I'm tired as hell, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm waking up for that 5 a.m. train sex, you know? <laughs> That's right. Hey, here's an email from Elias. Yo. Blindsided. What? Hey, James and May. So uh, fellow Aussie here, after hearing about the alleged claims of the movie The Blind Side, oh, a yeah. falsified story, so I this. can't help but feel a little blindsided myself. Whoa, Just wondering man. if a movie or its details surrounding release and production has ever left you guys feeling blindsided. Wow. Apparently the um, – oh, he, he says, for me, I'd have to say The Blair Witch Project, the way it was shot and marketed, left many wondering if it was actually a true story. Yeah. It is true. Um, the Catch Me If You Can – Story. Yeah, that's apparently. all made up. That's all made up, which, which look. Which is pretty cool. <laughs> apparently he's not a very good guy. This no, guy. he's bad. But the guy, the guy who claimed that he was like, okay, I pretended to be a pilot and then I got to fly around. You know, I, you, get the, you get to use the jump seat and I got to fly all around the world. And, yeah. You know, I used the, the status to get rich and all this sort of stuff. Apparently he made all of that up. So he mm. never even did any of it. He just made up the story. Yeah. The, the story was so compelling that it got made into a movie in which – it actually all happened. A guy caught him if he could. That's right. Other examples, though, where a movie has let me down. <laughs> You're under arrest. I've caught you if I could. <laughs> Damn. Can't believe you caught me if you could. <laughs> it's a fair cop. You caught me if you could. And you did. <laughs> You're it. welcome. <laughs> oh, man. I'm sure there's been movies where you look into I'm going to give you the electric chair if I can. 
<laughs> you could. Well done. I think there's definitely movies, and look, I don't watch most of these movies, but like Green Book, where it's like, I've solved racism by driving around America mm. and you know, whatever. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. There's like movies like that. There's a yeah. bunch of those that are just like Os- Oscar bait, like fucking Drek, mm. you know? Um, but, you know, yeah, they're good is what I'm saying. <laughs> they do sound good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, off the top of my head, I can't think of that many, but I think I always feel a betrayal when it's like, and when it's any kind of biopic and it's like yeah. there's a big there, – there's like a, you know, a big event scene or like they were inspired because of this and then it's just like, well, it didn't – that didn't Yeah, happen. it's not real, yeah. They, they were inspired to write this song by this event that happened to them and it's like, no, they just thought of it. Yeah. They, the real story is like they saw a guy and they went, well, that guy's got blue suede shoes on. Better write a song about oh that. Oh, my God. Right? Well, I know like – there's a recent example and I haven't seen it because it's not out here yet but The Sound of Freedom. Mm. Like, uh, look, it's, I know it's super controversial. I know that, Mason. Uh-huh. I'd hate to get into it, but Uh-oh. a lot of that is, like, bullshit. But also a lot of that is also, like, openly bullshit. That's like, yeah, no, right this has been dram- dramatized for mm. for whatever, whatever effect. Yeah, yeah. You know? I don't mind when it's, like... American Sniper's all bullshit, apparently. No, I've heard that, yeah. Yeah. Um, a Beautiful Mind, apparently his mind was dog shit. Well, and Should ugly. be called a dog shit, ugly-ass mind. That's right. From this bitch. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I don't know no, yeah. of the specifics. Um, oh, hang on, I've lost my train of thought, but that's all right. Some yeah. would say I never had a train of thought in the first place. Mm. Um, oh, yeah, like I don't mind it if it's like, okay, well, the story's about this main character and who is real or something. You know, it's a biopic. And they had two friends and they combined the two friends or something like that. Or like, you know, there's a one person contributed one idea and one person contributed the other so they combine the two, I guess. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. I would feel I would probably feel differently if I was part of the family of one of the two people that got eliminated or yeah. turned into one person or whatever. But, absolutely, you know, yeah. You know. Well, I'm just looking at a list here from Looper, the website. Good Morning Vietnam, apparently. A lot of that is fake. Wow, happened in the afternoon. Yeah, that, that movie 21, remember that one about the blackjack? Yes. Apparently, like, because they, they put all like mostly white kids in the movie, and that's not true. Oh. And a bunch of other stuff. Mm. Uh, Cinderella Man. Cinderella was a woman. Um, the Fighter. I don't know. More of a lover. More of, yeah. <laughs> let's get. How many more do you have? Let's do. James, let's do a funny joke. The Revenant. Not um, actually the bear cut open the man. Oh, really? Got, got, got in, oh, got my in the man. God. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's the reverse of what happened in the movie. Uh, the Perfect Storm. Um, it wasn't that good a storm. No. It was far from perfect. No. Imperfect storm. It was a perfect recall. Oh, That's wow. about me. Wow, is it? That's correct, yes. Yeah. That one wasn't true because, like, that boat just disappeared. Oh. So, so like, anything that happened after they left. Oh, it was just made up. was just made up. Okay. Yeah. So there could have just been a slow leak. Yeah, they didn't find a log because the boat disappeared. Mm. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Oh, the movie 300, that's fake. Oh, yeah? Some of it. <laughs> That, uh, that's true. Hey, here's an email, James. Yo. Daryl. He, he says, y'all seen They Clone Tyrone. I have. Uh, I says, talked about it on Suggestible. Nice. Greetings from sunny St. Petersburg, Florida. Happy to say I've been listening to your podcast for years. Yeah. Uh, always appreciate your weekly dose of banter and escapism. Speaking of which, have you seen They Clone Tyrone on Netflix yet? It's a fresh pulpy take with a sci-fi spin. Great performances by Boyega, Fox, and Paris. Yeah. So you've seen it. It's on my list. It's really cool. Stuff. Uh, if you want a Netflix movie that is actually good, there you go. this is a good, really good one. It's really cool and funny. And Jamie Foxx seems to be recovering well, which is That's also good. awesome. Um, but no, it's a lot of it's a lot of fun and dark. And it is that kind of like I know it harkens back to a certain era. You know what I mean? I it's love it when things like, harken back to a certain yeah, era. Yeah, but because I couldn't quite tell. Like it's it seems to be set in the seventies, but also yeah, but it's like it's this weird kind of. Is it like Sorry to Bother You? I've never that? seen Sorry to Bother okay, You. Right. I should watch that. No, it's this weird kind of like um, – would kind of that, that would get I'll just spoilers. I'll simply watch, watch it, James. It, yeah. I'll simply watch oh, it. Oh, Hidalgo, you know that horse race movie? Yes. Fake, apparently not a real horse race. Wow. That guy made up that desert horse race, horse race wow. or whatever, yeah. So cool. Anything else? That's everything, James. That's you, every email that anyone's ever said. I've got another one here. A lot of people emailed in about the Loveland frog. It's a big frog. <laughs> yeah, that one really caught more, my yeah, imagination. More people emailed in and they were like, what about this big frog? And I'm like, <laughs> Stephen, look, quick shout out to Stephen and also uh, Ryan, both who emailed in about the Loveland frog. Yeah. What about it? Oh, uh, they does love it, it. Does it walk? Yeah. I feel like it does a big walk, right? Yeah, big lanky frog walk. Yeah, yeah frog walk. Love that. And there's a little there's a little picture where they do the thing where they put a, uh, a silhouette of a man next to the silhouette of a frog, so you can see how big it is. 
And the frog's smaller than a man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Learn to be bigger, frog. Yeah, come on. God damn it. It's from Luca who says, I listened to my first episode of the podcast seven years ago in my first year of high school here in the UK. Today, I got my A-level results. A, A, A. Damn. I know. And I'm off to Oxford University. Oh, so, Oxford University. Look at me. Oh. Congratulations, cup of tea <laughs> and so forth Etc. at Oxford University uh, to study art. You've been with me all the way. Well, probably not now that we made fun of uh, Oxford. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Throw your MP3 player in the bin <laughs> as you're entering Oxford University. You won't need, uh, you won't need us. Yeah. Uh, you have been with me all the way uh, through all my many trials. Thank you. That's incredible. Well done. That's right. It's really great. exciting. Big congrats. That seems yeah. difficult. I'd imagine, imagine if I applied for Oxford, they'd probably be a pretty firm no. Yeah. Yeah. No, they'd oh, say. what? It is. Be gone from here. I'd say you'll regret it, but they wouldn't. No. <laughs> they would never. <laughs> no. They wouldn't think about me. Yeah. I think they could get into Oxford for podcasting. Pod, Podsford University. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Podsford University. Really we could good. set up a shack next to Oxford University just on the side of the road. <laughs> Damn. It's a scam university to be clear. Yeah, it would have to be, yeah. 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 Anything else? No, it's the whole show, show. Wow. Yeah. What a great show we've done. I think so. Talking about the movie Blue Beetle, which came out last week. God, one day we'll talk about it. We will. Or maybe actually. we'll miss it. Maybe the. Maybe it'll be out on streaming before it hits here. It's very possible. Maybe, yeah. You know? Okay. Uh, regardless, folks, thank you so much for listening. We appreciate it very, very much. Whoa. That's right. Uh, thank you for telling your friends about the podcast. Thank you for sharing it around. Thank you for leaving a five-star review on your podcast catcher of choice. Most of the time you can just do it in app or it's a very laborious progress uh, Absolutely, pro- pro- process. Absolutely, yeah. Mm. You're not wrong. Oh, I was just looking at my Twitter feed opened up and that video you showed me of the liver king. Oh, yep. You, you seen it? What is he doing? That man eating a, eating a weird eating a raw meat cereal. Fish in a bowl of milk. God, he looks like he's just going to die. Yeah. Like, I'm, oh, God. But in a way, you know, makes you think about your own mortality and the choices you've made. Yeah. So in a way, he's doing you a favor and you should send him money. <laughs> because if he wasn't doing this, I would be doing it. Yep, that's right. Because <laughs> I would be curious to what. What eating would... a big cereal of meat and milk would uh, would look like, yeah. <laughs> Why is he like this? I don't know. You don't have to do this, man. James, he's doing it for the money, right? He's doing it. <laughs> I mean, he is rich, apparently. He was already, Not already. rich. Oh, yeah. But he's insane. That's God, his skin sound. is like the wrong color. Yeah. God. Texture's all fucked. Anyway. <laughs> you got any reviews there, James? Yeah. Um, you can just do it in app. Any yeah. app is fine. This one's from Gabriel. Oh, your said, notes app. No. No. Yeah, see? I mean, you could maybe perfect it in there. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Two English boys take down woke culture. Five stars, by the way. That's so There's true. There's nothing better than listening to two English boys take down woke culture. One review of Transformers at a time. Disclaimer, they don't actually talk about take talk take down woke culture because they're normal and agreeable people. They're also not English. I think they're from New Zealand or something. That is true. We could pivot to taking down woke culture. Definitely. Mm. There's money in it. I go, oh, the video because the, the, the MCU one about the um, – the, 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 the secret, secret invasion. invasion. Got a million. That's right. That's why people do it. Thank you to Collins for editing that video. It's tremendous. Got a million. Yeah. yeah, see, that's why you do it. Mason, we got to pivot. we got to pivot. Gotta pivot harder. God, we no. hate stuff. We could do that. Oh, Come on. I don't have any Hate strong... stuff with me. I don't have any strong feelings about anything. Hate stuff with me. Okay. All right. And this one's from Eric the same who says, listen to podcast. They say words good. Thank you so much. That is so we true. We accept all five-star reviews. That's exactly right, folks. If you want to get into contact with us, you can go to weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com, at Facebook, at Twitter, at Bandcamp. You can go to the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group. You can go to the Weekly Planet Podcast subreddit and Discord. Go to any of those places if you want fun civil discourse about podcasts and pop culture Woo! just bloody get in there thank you to uh fidel and uh, surabi and and Maisie for moderating those so very well and doing all sorts of stuff including tiktoks and videos that's and right all kinds of stuff uh if you want to follow some people on the internet you should follow our friend rob collings who edited that video and edits this podcast yep. and puts in those time codes uh, Even he's though i tell him not to that's right <laughs> Defying you. That's right. For the last time. Yes. He's at Raw Collings on Twitter. He's at The Weekly Planet on Twitter for your Weekly Planet news. You can follow me on Twitter at Wikipedia Brown and on Instagram at Nick Maso. James is Mr. Sunday Movies everywhere. Whoa. If you want to support the show, you go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies. You chuck in a buck or any amount you would not miss. That's the key. That's or right. Or you can go to bigsandwich.co for nine US dollars per month. You get bonus podcast movie commentaries, early videos, video game let's plays, all sorts Ooh, of stuff. Yeah. And we take down woke culture. Up. 
That's right. That's where we do it for $9. Yeah, yeah, we won't yeah. do it here. No. We'll put on a kind of a – Give us money. We'll put on a, like a facade of being, you know, lefty soy boys. Yeah. But then, but then if you pay the money – That's the that's, real That's deal. the real stuff. You better believe it. And that's non-refundable. <laughs> uh, folks, you can buy some T-shirts on tpublic.com. Search for that's The Weekly right. Planet. And uh, thank you to the Brute and the Basilisk and Rackham for all our musical themes. Next week, a different thing probably. Maybe a movie will come out. Maybe something will happen. Yeah. Maybe we'll review PlayStation Commercial 2023. Okay, then. I feel like I already did that, though. Mm. Didn't I? Seemed that way. I Pretty think. convincing. More eloquently than I could manage, I think. Exactly. So. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everyone. Grab that. Gem. Whoa. Perfect recall. Done it again. That's right. Thank you, everybody. Bye.